Welcome to Radio Free HPC. This is where we talk about supercomputing, high performance computing, and other technology topics. I'm your Toastmaster, Rich Bruckner from Inside HPC, with my co hosts, Dan Olds from Gabriel Consulting and Henry Newman from Instrumental. Now let's get to the show. Uh, we were going to start out with you, Dan, a little bit about big analytics and when they go bad. So what's that all about? Well, one of the things we're going to see is as big data and analytics kind of sweeps through the enterprise, this is not, this is not going to be all sweetness and light. Um, not every every initiative is going to work out. And so I, I kind of got curious about that. I've seen a few people uh, point out uh, that there's the potential for problems. Uh, but I wanted to highlight just a couple of things that I found in uh, a little bit of research. Uh, this first one, uh, single source, it's a guy writing in a blog about something that happened to, the, to a school in his neighborhood. And I'm not positive. I Again, this isn't fully sourced out, so I don't know how true or not it is, but it does sound, uh, it has the ring of truth from the way it's written for what it's worth. What happened is that uh, this particular high school has uh, an advanced placement class, like most of them do, and they had their kids do a pre-school year writing assignment over the summer. They were turning that in. The school had decided to purchase some anti-plagiarism software, and these papers were the first to be run through it. That software came back with each and every 100% of those papers were plagiarized, according to the software. It's incredible. The school took that, of course, unfortunately, as gospel, that there was actual plagiarism. The problem is that the parents were outraged, of course, right? And uh, they dug into this. And the problem is that the software defaults were incredibly high. So that, for instance, any time three words in a row matched on, on any of the papers, it was plagiarism. As part of the assignment, the kids were able to use the dictionary. And if they used any of those same words in the definition of a term, that was marked down as plagiarism. Uh, the school did back down a little bit, but they're still suspicious to the point that the... Um, Teachers aren't doing college recommendations for the students, and uh, the kids got a, a zero grade for that. And I, this hasn't been updated, so I don't know, because it's hard for me to believe that reasonable adults would take the word of well, Dan, Dan, hold on. You Go just ahead. used a term that might not be correct, reasonable and adults. Uh, yeah, that's the point. The real point in all of this is that you can't blindly follow any software. You can't blindly follow what a machine says uh, without having human intuition in there somewhere. What about Hal, Dan? Can we should blindly follow Hal? Well, Hal's a different thing. Um, And actually, I guess following that thread a little bit then, should the final astronaut, and why the hell I can't remember that name right now, but should he have just gone along with the program and let Hal off him? Well, Dan, I, I read the article you, you sent me, and I, I actually think we should put the link up so some other people know. It, it disturbed me, and it actually incensed me, and I, it made me want to go out and look and see if this was really true, what the limits are. At. But this wasn't the only example you had that you no. sent out. And we will put the link up on our website, which will be at uh, RadioFreeHPC.com. Nice job of highlighting that in the introduction, Rich. Good move. <laughs> Nothing like yeah, I have three things to remember. I don't go beyond that. My buffer gets full. Okay. Well, Rich, you have five fingers. Exactly. little more serious implications of when uh, analytics goes bad is take a look at what happened with J.P. Morgan Chase. A few weeks ago, they announced that uh, they had some bad trades, bad positions, that were going to cost them something like $2 billion in losses, trading losses. Well, now we're up to... Uh, estimates of as high as $9 billion in trading losses so associated with these same trades, these same positions that they had. What's happened there, and we're not going to go into the actual trades and the positions and all of that, but we're talking about a, a, syst- a systemic problem in that a company like J.P. Morgan has analytic software like you can't believe in terms of both uh, strategic, looking at what positions they have long-term exposure over long-term, but also 
the ability to see what their exposure is to different uh, market moves at any given time. Problem is, is that all these tools didn't give them visibility into what their real exposure was. And uh, that is, a, as we can see, a very bad thing. It's going to cost them at least $2 billion, but perhaps as much as $9 billion as they try and unwind these positions. Part of the problem, too, by the way, is that competitors have attacked them once they figured out what these positions are were. So they're going uh, for blood like sharks in the water. Dan, why are the positions and what happened, why is that a big data analytics problem? I understand it's an insight problem in the data, but can you explain to me why it's an analytics problem? A couple of reasons, and we're still waiting for, for all of the gory details to emerge from this. As an entity, as a massive financial entity, Morgan has many, many positions on on both sides of of pretty much every market and anything in between, and a lot of custom blends. That's a pretty huge analytics problem in and of itself, just figuring out how each one of those positions may impact uh, the overall profit and loss for the bank itself as well as for the unit that holds that. Where it really gets deeply into analytics is taking all of those positions and running uh, through scenarios with them, uh, Monte Carlo type scenarios, uh, Black Shoals type things, stuff like that, in order to figure out if these particular things happened, interest rate move, commo- move in the underlying commodities, financial markets move, what is this going to do to all of our positions? And it's analytics to an extent, but in a lot of ways, it's also governance. It shows that a lot of these, I I would suspect that a lot of these positions and trades were held in different silos and that the folks that should have had visibility over all of this didn't really have that visibility. And how is that going to impact regulation? What has to happen on the regulation side if you're going to have insight all these at a time and try to figure out what should have been done from a regulatory point of view? Well, it's interesting in that banking is, is very highly regulated, even higher levels of regulation now than in the past. This is definitely going to get some attention, and I think it's going to force through better well, I don't even, I'm not going to say better, but it's going to force through more regulation. I think, though, that this is something that, from what I'm seeing, the regulators should have already known. But even on their side, they don't have the tools or the exposure or the skills to be able to, to uh, total up what the ex- total exposure is to the firm. How much data are we talking about crunching here, Dan? I mean, and how much, I mean, is... Can your average computer system, can your average regulatory agency really even keep up with this? On the regulatory agency side, I would say probably not. But typically uh, what they do is that they have the firm itself supply the models. And then they pass on whether the model is an appropriate uh, measure of the risk or what that risk is, and then require a particular uh, level of capital behind each trade or behind each particular product. What I'm not sure of is is exactly how much underlying data there is. There has to be uh, quite a bit. And and by the way, this is all pretty closely held information on the part of financial services industry. Uh, They don't want to disclose any of this for competitive reasons. One of the big problems you have, too, in uh, particularly in enterprise, is that new systems and new tools and uh, management suites, etc., they're layered in on top of old legacy stuff, and you get these very thick layers of software and uh, analytics that um, make it very tough to clearly see the underlying picture. Well, Dan, these are tremendously complex financial instruments we're talking about, and, um, you know, regulation is is a tough cookie, right? But uh, at at the same time, there's there's an element of greed here that you got to wonder if they just didn't overplay their hand. Well, you're right. That could happen, but I kind of doubt that it did in this case. I, I think from what I've seen in following this, uh, upper management um, at, at Chase was not just 
unpleasantly surprised but shocked that they could have this kind of exposure and not really seem to know about it. Taking a $9 billion or even a $2 billion hit is a huge deal, even for a company that, that's managing, you know, approaching trillions of dollars, if not more. Well, these are big numbers, big dollars involved. And uh, well, what do you think is going to shake out of this, Dan? More regulation or is oh. the jury still out? Well, well for, but, but Rich, it's not just, I mean, it's dollars, it's numbers. But the first example, Dan, had impacted some, you know, kids' lives and permanently you know, if you read the article, permanently it's going to impact their lives along with – it's kind of personal. So it goes – I think it's both ends of the spectrum here that Dan's talking about. And these are really just examples to sort of illustrate a greater point in that we're going to see some mistakes made with big data and with analytics. We're going to see some some fairly public blow-ups, I guess, for, for want of a better term. But the, the real lesson in here – is you need to understand what you're doing before you follow the recommendations of software. Before you lead where big data is is supposedly taking you, make sure you've got a pretty firm understanding of what's going into that. So you don't take humans out of the loop. I think you, this should be an ongoing theme of things. You you know you seem to be looking at this fairly carefully. I'd like to dig in and on this on a kind of a regular basis. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely uh, see what we can find. That's it for this edition of Radio Free HPC. Thank you for listening, and be sure to check back often for new episodes. Also, check out our website for more content, links, and a place for you to let us know what you think about the show. We're at RadioFreeHBC.com. Thanks again. We'll be back with another exciting episode real soon.